The following live stream has been approved for restricted audiences only. It will definitely contain strong language and maybe some adult themes. Almost certainly, viewer inebriation is advised. Good evening, happy Friday, and welcome back to Last Call, where the old folks at the bar like to share fond memories of entertainment we enjoyed in the past, so you know that there are good options available to you. Although tonight's musing are on a film company, that was kind of a mixed bag. Some fond memories, some, uh, not so much, but still worth talking about. Look, you just need to hear this. Seriously, strap in, top off your glasses, and we'll get this Canarbal wagon rolling right now. Last call is streamed before a live audience. Salud. Welcome, welcome. So glad you're here. And uh, tonight I am sipping on, uh, well, it's predominantly uh, Hearings uh, 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 Cherry Liqueur uh, from Copenhagen. Uh, very good, but very sweet. It's like, uh, well, well, it's like a liquid candy. So I've cut it with, uh, not that you can see it, three olives, uh, cherry vodka, um, uh, not a sponsored uh, stream, just saying. And uh, I'm not obviously going to put olives in my drink uh, because it's uh, cherries. So three drunken cherries. Um, and uh, it's still actually a little bit thick. I'm probably going to cut it with a little bit more vodka as we get into it. And let me tell you, given the subject matter tonight, it's going to be fun, but it, it'll be more fun with booze. I think that's uh, that's the way to go. And... Uh, uh, first, I want to say hi to, yes, uh, JPRPH1. Uh, John, you were first, but you were here early enough that your comment has dropped off, so I did want to give you the credit for being first. Uh, next, of course, was Curtis Selby. Hi, see, Selby, because I haven't gotten far enough into my drink to start slurring my words. Um, Howdy, Troy, currently in a live stream with Moira Kitty, but I will try to watch y'all's just may be late. Perfectly okay. Totally understand. Uh, please say hi to Moira Kitty for us. She is good people. Uh, Mr. Lundell's groovy movies. Greetings, greetings. Um, and uh, David Pensack. Another hell of a week. Hurry up. Last call with Troy Pacelli and get here. Drink them if you got them. Yes, because when it's been a brutal, brutal week, uh, when the alcohol goes in, the sadness must go somewhere else. Uh, of course, Big Al of Big Al presents. Ah, the memories have a great stream, my friends. Yes, please make sure that you uh, join us on Big Al presents tomorrow night for Death Race 2000. Looking very, very forward to that one. I I know Netter is. Um. Let's see, Connie Cleary, hail, hail, hail. Uh, this R. Flatstone guy over there at uh, on the Rumble channel, welcome. Uh, if you like what you see in here, please subscribe. Um, I guess that goes for here as well as over on Rumble. And if we go into extra innings tonight, uh, we will finish up on Rumble. And you can join us there. Connie Cleary, hail, hail. And, of course, the lovely and talented Netter of Netter's Network. I love you, too, my dear, so much. I want to get you in here. How are you today, my dear? And what are you sipping on? Well, I am actually sipping on alcoholic beverage because... I've corrupted her. That's why. Well, any week that I have a team meeting and my one-on-one, -on -one, my boss, makes things hectic... And it's just like, ugh. So, yeah, I'm having an alcoholic beverage this, this week. And it is, I'm not sure if it has an actual name. It's it's uh, Malibu pineapple rum along with pineapple juice. 
I'm sure it's got a name. I just Pacelli don't know Paradise. <laughs> it does now. Okay. So, like, your drink, uh, did we decide cherry uh, you pie? You decided on cherry pie, and I'm, yep. I'm going to call it uh, Pacelli's Cherry Pie. Well, because you were saying it was thicker, too. It reminds me of the um, the filling in cherry pie, where it's kind of that thicker. Yeah. Yeah. As I, as I cut it with a little <laughs> bit more cherry vodka, it'll become more of a cherry... Jubilee? I could light it on fire, yeah. <laughs> well, if I put enough vodka in it, I absolutely could. I, that actually sounds like not a bad deal. Yeah, pretty tough day uh, at work for myself today. Uh, I had a bit of uh, I thought I was having a, a pretty smooth and mellow Friday, only come to find out that because they were updating my, uh, my email server, uh, I wasn't getting any emails from, like, lunch until, like, an hour before, you know, the end of the day. So when I refreshed... I got like 25 orders. I was like, yeah, these aren't going in this week. It's just not, I'm not staying late. Oh, and before I forget, because I paused over there briefly, uh, Trey said to give you major hugs and lots of love. I saw that he went live and I was going to drop in and say hi, but I was busy getting the stream together. So It's okay. I dropped in for My both bad. of us. My bad. Absolutely. But he said to send you the love, Will give do. you hugs. Uh, Mr. Londell's Groovy Movies. Welcome, my friend. Good to see you here. I just like saying that. I know. Groovy Mr. Movies. Londell's Groovy Movies. Uh, and, um, I'm not sure if this means you're back, Curtis, but, uh, welcome and hello again. <laughs> Troy! It's his twin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's his evil twin, uh, um, Connor. Connor Shelby, right? Um... Selby, no H. I see. I told you, I get enough drinks in me, I start to slur. Lady Mist, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. You are awesome. Um, and uh, Canon, the go-to production house for low-budget action sci-fi, body period pieces, and late-night skin flicks on HBO and Showtime. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. Yes, we do too, and we will get more into it as uh, as, as we uh, get through this. It is time for the Carnival Wagon to have an additional cart added, or do we need a larger Carnival Wagon? Hmm... Maybe a larger Carnarvon wagon. Nah, nah, you know what? Here's the thing about the Carnarvon wagon, right? The Carnarvon wagon is intended, it's a bar cart, right? I've got a full bar at the back of my basement here. So I take some things that either I use on a regular basis or I want quick access to and put them on the bar cart. So that's... Which that's, is upstairs. Which is upstairs. But I don't need to increase the size because I have a full bar back there. I really do. Maybe one of these days I'll do a video, you know, on my bar. I just got to clean, clean, it up clean, clean things up. Yeah. We got the, the Java sail barge sitting on it right too. now. I mean, you will grab bottles and mix bottles around. And so I will have an eat and pretty where I'll have like all the vodka flavors together and all the, you know, uh, the gins and all the, you know, whatever. And then he I'll, goes I'll help you clean up. It. I'll help you clean up. I'll, I'll polish off some of those bottles to thin it out a little bit. Well, what you need to do is the other side where we got all these different mixers that I don't think you've ever touched. So yeah, to I've got to be, you know, I, I grew up with this whole mentality of, you know, if you spent money on it, you can't just throw it out. And I'm starting to learn more and more when it comes to things like foods and drinks that you're never going to eat and drink. Just get rid of the damn things, you know. I mean, unless it's like a special novelty thing, right. like the Klingon. Uh, yeah, things that I'm never gonna and... open. They're there for display, you know. The 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 bottles of Klingon blood wine and so forth. They're just gonna they're just gonna stay there for display. But uh, uh, speaking of which, one of the one of the possibilities for tonight, although it didn't feel quite right, because you know this is not at all related to uh, to Star Trek at all. But uh, I do want to do a stream where I do a taste test of the two different varieties of uh, Romulan ale online and talk the about light blue that. and the dark blue. The <laughs> light blue and the dark blue. It's almost it's almost like aquamarine. Um, let's see. Oh, and salute to you, uh, deleted scene. Sorry, that's where that's what I was in the middle of when I got distracted. And of course, 
Matt and Newly, salute. So glad you are here. It's always awesome to see you. And I think, I think, oh, Samuel Proctor. Salve. And of course, you got this age boomer guy in the chat, too, saying hello to people. That's because he just wants to br wants me to bring him in. Let me, uh... Okay, Curtis Selby says, At the moment, I have exactly and only one bottle of vodka. Crystal had vodka from Dan Aykroyd. Tell me how that is. I've been wanting to pick up a bottle of that. Uh, I know Netter would like me to, just because it's a really, really cool bottle. But, um... He's one of the Blues Brothers. Yes, he is. Absolutely. And it doesn't taste anything like Orange Whip. As long as there's no ectoplasm in there. I hope not. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome, Nate. Good to see you. And I think I said hi to Jesse Guajardo. though. If I didn't, welcome, welcome. And I'm glad you're feeling better, Jesse. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And Jesse and... I'm probably going to miss some comments because I really do want to get through saying hi to everybody. Please don't uh, put cherry pie. Okay, okay, bringing you in right now. How you doing, my friend? And what are you sipping on? Me? Oh, I'm here. I got yes. a Coke. <laughs> okay, because you're the designated driver. You're Did you to... like my comment about Pot Cherry Pie? Pot Cherry Pie. There yes. you go, huh? I like that. I like that. That would work. Hi to Tommy and the Guinea Pig Collective. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I, yeah, unfortunately, I am kind of starting to slow down as I... Uh, as I uh, Slowing as I down? Drink, as I drink. Oh, my goodness. He Welcome, Tommy. not even have that much of that drink. It, it is a little bit pumpkin. Yeah. You had a rough day at work too. That's probably not helping. I That's why we do this, right? For all the people that have the rough day at work. I yeah, that really <laughs> is week. it. And I gotta tell you, it, it it has been a brutal week, and today was just a brutal, brutal day. Um, but uh, you know what? That's why I do this because uh, it's therapy. It's therapy. This is medicinal, and you guys are my therapy. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So, Agent Boomer, uh, what's the topic for tonight? Tonight, we are talking about Canon uh, films, uh, the Canon group uh, that were mainly headlined by the two main producers. If I have their names, I believe it was uh, Joran Globus and Menahem Glo Golan. Golan and Globus. Menachem. Yes. yes. Menachem. Menachem. Okay. Well, uh, we used to call them Glo Golan and Globus movies back in the 80s. Now, I want to make a disclaimer before we start. Um, we're really just going to talk about maybe the production, some of the troubles. We're not going to cast judgments on these movies. Negativity, we're not about that. No, you there's going to be no <laughs> negativity at all. In fact, even the bad movies we enjoyed. At least so, I did. I'm not. I shouldn't speak for you, Agent Boomer. I'm making but, fun of Chris Stuckman. How he would wouldn't probably he wouldn't attack a canon movie. No, some of these. Oh, are, okay, I see what you're that saying. That was what I, I was trying saying. to do. No, I, I wouldn't that. though, because honestly, <laughs> even the bad movies. That, I mean, of all the canon films that I've seen, at least the films that I knew were canon films, um, even the bad ones I enjoyed. Um, Will I? I don't want to get ahead of you because uh, I've got some thoughts and things that I'd like to say about that, but we'll, we'll save them for their due time. But, uh, well, I got my little, before hmm? I bring that up. Yes. Do you have, uh, do you have anything you want to say about, you know, background or intro that the, 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 the audience needs to can? Okay. Launch in? Here's what I'll, I'll do briefly. Um, back in the eighties, we didn't really have what we call now the internet. I'm sure maybe it exists in some form for the military. I know some people could talk to each other over modems with their computers, but we didn't have the World Wide Web as it exists yes, today or even as it existed in the late 90s. So we didn't have a lot of information about these movies. But when you're a kid and you're watching Showtime, you begin to notice patterns. Yes. <laughs> and you begin to notice that some movies are of higher quality than others, even though they're both released at the same time. And then eventually you start noticing names popping up on the screen, the names of Golan Globus, and then Golan Globus gets a bad reputation. When you see those names, I was like, oh, no! But and you'd still watch it because what else are you going to do? And that's, <laughs> Go outside and, that's very and play? True. No. When you see <laughs> Golan and Globus, you get you know, a certain idea of what the movie's going to be like. Just like when you see Dino De Laurentiis, you exactly. get a certain idea of what the film is going to... 
Dino De Laurentiis, what? It's not always going to be the best movie, but it's going to be grand and yes. huge and yes. large in scope and yes. probably lots and lots of extras. A booming soundtrack, right? <laughs> um, and uh, very epic and heroic and uh, larger than life. Yep. Larger than life. Because he did King Kong. So you see what I did there? Whereas Canon brought us back down to Earth. Though they tried they, they tried on several occasions to give us things that were larger than life, but it helps if you spend money on special like effects. Like Hercules. But, oh, we're going to get into that. <laughs> I, had, I Have you seen that? Because uh, this is where I'm hoping you come in to fill in some blanks for me. I haven't I've not seen, seen it. Seen I've every... only seen clips of okay. it. It is one of those so ones we'll have to that touch like, on that. I probably really need to see that. Because I've seen a scene of it where... <laughs> Yeah. Literally, Hercules yeah. is like a giant, and I'm like, yeah. this makes no sense. He like, like I think no... some ray hits him and he becomes a giant and pushes the things, and I'm like, and he's fighting these steampunk robot monsters, which makes it's, no sense. It, yeah, absolutely not. Uh, real quick, want to say peace and long life to Logical Spock. Welcome, welcome. And uh, yeah, well, wasn't so... there wasn't there a Hulk villain that would make like these steampunk style inventions? He was an ancient Greek guy. Tyrannus, I remember that. Remember Tyrannus? I actually don't. He was a no. Hulk villain, but I think he came from. I guess he was like the Marvel equivalent of Vandal Savage, and like he had existed for hundreds of years. I think he came back from either Greek or Roman times, yeah. and he would create these big elaborate machines to destroy the world or something. And then like he'd show <laughs> it to the Hulk, Hulk and the Hulk would say, "Hulk," so he'd get very angry. He's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> it's like this. That's all the Hulk would do is smash it. I'm surprised they they never bothered using him in any of the movies. But wait a minute! Wait a minute! Ferrigno's, wait a minute, Ferrigno's Hercules films, plural? There were two, there yeah, there were two. more than one, holy Hercules crap. and Hercules 2, a.k.a. The Adventures of Hercules, yes. I did not them. know this. Okay, I have, <laughs> these are going on my to-watch list. Absolutely must. Are we talking about the Lou Ferrigno? Yes, we, we, we just were. Terrible movie, and I loved every frame of it. That's exact. You know what? This okay. this comment is right. exactly what I was talking about about Canon Films. I hated it, but I loved every frame of it. Yes. Well, Jesse Guardo. Yeah, no. I mean, no. Tyrannus was a cool Hulk villain. I mean, he was in a lot of Hulk comics in the seventies. Um, I don't know if they've done anything with him recently in Marvel, but he, I, I, as I said, he reminded me. The concept reminds me of Vandal Savage. It's like um, a guy from I'm the sure ancient world that's been up. on life. Yeah. He will show up in a Marvel film uh, played by a woman of color, probably <laughs> a lesbian. An outcast from Wakanda, probably from a thousand, a thousand years yes. ago, right? Yes, <laughs> Instead exactly. of ancient Greece. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Can I, do I have control of this thing? I do. Yes. Forget about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We have the Canon Cinematic Universe. Actually, it's gotten to the point where we're <laughs> probably talking about pretty much even in in terms of quality did yeah. you know canon had the rights to spider-man yes i, I did menachem and... golan didn't understand spider-man he's like oh he's gonna turn into a spider at night and attack people and it's like no that's not spider-man no yeah it's they kind of a good thing that he didn't but isn't wasn't it under canon that the unreleased uh fantastic four film was made it might have been i i was watching uh, he outtakes did do from the, the documentary 19... 90-ish something yeah. Captain America. Uh, that Captain was America. after Canon Films fell apart and uh, after they split up and I think, uh, mm. was it Globus that separated? I think he did the, uh, Yolan Globus, I think he did the um, the uh, the uh, the Captain America movie, which I saw experts from. It looks horrible. Yeah, they, it, 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 we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but Globus went and did his movie studio. Yeah, there was a big fight. Menachem did um, 21st Century pictures or something i think like so or, or one did the other i'm doing great thank you thank you uh deep end sec uh but yeah but i'm it joking it was roger corman but it i i thought it was phil it was no i guess not it's hard because it was say. never distributed was it the so, fantastic four roger corman maybe it's the fantastic four that was roger corman captain america was young uh golan captain america was definitely um the, the yeah. cannon boys yeah or one um of them. i have to say though um i make this joke but it was on a website i used to go to a lot it's still a good great website teleport city 
in one of the reviews of one of the mo canon movies, I don't know if it was Death Wish or American Ninja, but they uh, they were they were saying that you know I always like to think that canon films all existed in the same universe, like Breakin and Death Wish and um, you know Missing in Action. They all yep. took place in the same universe. You know, but, I can believe uh, that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> canon films. You know what? There's okay. There's a little nostalgia that goes into this. I mean, obviously, that's why we're doing this, right? But. You never knew what to expect. Uh, oh. Except you probably assumed there was going to be some boobas. Sometimes there was. In fact, you said there's not related to Star Trek. Marina Sirtis was in some canon movies, and you got to see her. Her uh, right. Her, uh, so those of her, you her, her. that were <laughs> in the the whole. Um, uh, convention scene. Yeah. Oh, back, tell me about this. Yeah. Back in the the next generation era, uh, this was before DVDs. This was back when uh, VHS was king, and <laughs> at the conventions, uh, bootleg VHS was uh, was the way to go. And uh, so, what you oftentimes would get was uh, uh, stuff that you would now find on the internet. You would you know, pay a few bucks for and pick up these bootleg VHS. And there was one that I got and I'm admitting this with my wife sitting directly across from me. It was like all the nude scenes that Star Trek people had done. And, uh, believe it or not, both, um, Marina Sirtis and Patrick Stewart, uh, had clips in this, uh, fan made, uh, little bootleg <laughs> and the, uh, the, um, Marina Sirtis scenes from, Want to say Wicked Woman or something like that? Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, I think it was Wicked Woman. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, with the whip, Faye, Faye Dunaway. Dunaway. Faye Dunaway. Yeah, Faye Dunaway um, was in that. Also, another canon film. Patrick Stewart was in a movie called Life Life Force. Force? We're, 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 yep. 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 where he isn't really nude, but the girl <laughs> is nude. That Matilda turns May, into him or he turns into her. Oh my goodness! Dead. So there is this scene basically of Patrick Stewart with boobas. <laughs> oh man, I have to well, say too. It sounds like these guys were totally mix up a lot of movies, so I could see them doing bad, or I'm sorry, breaking, and then breaking bad, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> uh, Maria, hey, you know what? I never see Maria on my channel. She's usually always on Netter's channel. Because Maria loves me. Well, I can understand <laughs> why. I love you too. But uh, welcome, Maria. It's awesome to see you. Please. I am not saying this for myself. I am not saying this for Maria. I'm saying this for you. Go to Maria's channel and check out her most recent video. She uh, she she has a beautiful singing voice. You will thank me. Trust me, trust me. And Maria will be my very special guest on Thursday Things next week. So you want to make sure you tune in for that. Yep, yep, that'll be Thursday. Yeah, we'll be talking about that. Uh, if we end up going into extra innings on uh, Rumble tonight, we'll go through the list of everything we'll be uh, doing this week. Uh, Marina Sirtis had, yeah, a cat fight with Faye Dunaway. We'll get into uh, it. <laughs> in a Golden Globus it's a, film. It's, it's on I, Tubi. I think it's still on Tubi. Keep in mind, a lot of those Tubi films are edited, so you might have to go to the hub if you want to see the what the, the full boobas yeah oh that's that's crap man i mean there's the, the, when it to be start censoring stuff they well Ugh. i think they always have um let's put you it get this some way. rare it's, films on there that you can't find anywhere else like it's like often, some of my, my it's, giallo movies I catch it's on often Tubi obvious they... if if uh <sighs> if it was a particularly explicit film it might be uh edited um, look, it's a great way to see a film for free, and if you like it, go get the physical media. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but you the know? point I'm trying to make is sometimes you can find movies on, on Tubi that are not on physical media, mm -hmm. or they were and aren't anymore, and this is a way for you to catch movies that aren't available at the moment. Keep but anyway, mind, should we... I'm always an advocate for if it doesn't exist in physical media, the internet is a thing. There are ways. <laughs> there are ways, you can make yes. your own physical media, just saying. That's how I used to watch old Doctor Who episodes, was finding certain sites that I could watch them from. Oh, they... <laughs> there's a documentary about the Roger Corman Fantastic well, I'll have to look TV. into it. I'll have to check that out. Thanks for thanks for mentioning that. I appreciate that. All right. Um, but, uh, in fact, it's... Um, I lost the comment now. The per Whoever it was that was talking about Marina Sirtis and, and Faye Dunaway 
uh, having their their cat fight with the cat of nine tails. Um, <laughs> there is uh, you see recurring themes in these canon films, and uh, we'll get a little bit more into that when we start talking about the Bo Derek films. But uh, we're, they, we'll talk. They drew <laughs> from everything, including history. So yeah. So let's go ahead and move on. Um, Want to do? I'm going to do the first one. Okay. Go for Sounds it. good. And I'll drink. The Happy Hooker Goes to Hollywood. You know, I did remember, you see this movie? I did not believe I it. I have or not. not. My, I, always... I remember my parents <laughs> talking about this movie, but I never actually saw it. And I'm wondering now if it's the kind of thing that I actually need to go out of my way to try to find. Like I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how explicit this is. This is like an anti Me Too movie. She conquered every producer's couch in town. Yikes. Uh yeah, and it's it's very interesting. We'll we'll be talking about this at some point in the future <laughs> on Sparkwood in Twenty One. Uh, we will be eventually watching the film. Um, Mulholland Drive, and we'll have an interesting discussion about the whole Me Too movement and how, you know, this this was not earth shaking, you know, news to find out about the casting couch. Uh, there's a great scene in in Mulholland Drive where uh, Kathy Selwyn, the main character, is you know giving this whole backstory about you know, her, her background and history. And she's talking to this older, older woman who's obviously been in Hollywood for a long time, gotcha. who is kind of reading between the lines and going like doing the whole sure Jan kind of thing. You know, it's like, we know what you've done and why you've done it. We all did it. Don't try to, sh you know, candy coat it, you know? We need to have we need a sequel with Happy Hooker facing off with Jennifer Lawrence. Ha ha. I I'd like to see that movie. But anyway. there were no women in Hollywood before Jennifer Lawrence. What I'm trying to say is Jennifer. Yeah. Whatever I think about Jennifer Lawrence's comments, she's a nice looking woman. That's what I'll say about her. Okay. She's okay. You know, you know, she's okay, okay. But we will be talking about some far more attractive women as we okay. go through this list. Anyway. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this the one. This apparently Apple, another <laughs> one that I have not seen, this... <laughs> but I have seen clips of, and I swear, I don't think I could watch this movie without alcohol. It's this one is a trip. Is is I apparently this was this was their attempt to make a version of Tommy. Yeah, that's. What they... Wasn't, they... <laughs> wasn't uh, what's his name from Tommy in it too? Um, I don't know. I think Charles dances in it either as Doctor Faustus or Satan or something. I don't know. He's and it like takes place in the dystopian future. And I guess there's the Adam and Eve thing. analogies. It's it's a story. <laughs> it's, like... it's 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 a Genesis. You know, the, you know, Adam and Eve, the Apple right, type right. story. <laughs> but it's set in. Do you know what year it's set in? 94, it says on the poster. The Power of Rock in 1994. This is the far future. <laughs> Look at Curtis Sobe going, what? I, and according to the documentary, I need to bring up that documentary. I think it's Electric Boogaloo, the, the mm -hmm, secret mm -hmm. history of canon films. But in, in it, they say that they show this to an audience. And I guess they gave out free LPs or uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the soundtrack to... to screeners that are going to see it yeah. and apparently they were throwing the record at the screen and it was embedded into the wall or something yes. and they tore up the screen that's how badly they, they hated it this wow. movie. it does sound like it does sound worse than the star wars holiday special from what i've heard uh it, it, i i do have a, a a degree of morbid curiosity about this movie i really do i've seen there is a scene of a bunch of people like in ghost form, like walking into the sky, and it looks very much like the the Wookies at the end of the Star Wars Holiday Special walking into the light. I I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on there. It's like okay, but it looks interesting <laughs> enough. Uh, this one I have seen now. As you can tell, 
I feel these early 80s canon movies were not really into the canon movies we know yet. These are like holdover 70s movies. Here's a slasher movie they put out, New Year's Evil. I don't know if you've seen this. I have not, but now I'm starting to think that might be a uh, uh, Monday night uh, at the movies uh, New Year's special this year. Perhaps that might be an idea. I, I think Terror, Terror Train is also another slasher movie that takes place on New Year's. Uh, this one, though, um, it was all right. I watched it a few years back. It um, The guy talks over the phone, and like he's the killer, and he says, I'm not good, I'm evil, and his voice is all garbled, and it had some punk bands, and it's all right. It's In, in fairness, yeah. David, uh, uh, Agent Boomer doesn't usually drink uh, caffeinated, sugary drinks, so for him, that's kind of high octane. Oh, funny, <laughs> funny man, funny man. I probably should have been vibed tonight, but oh well. <laughs> this would have been the night, right? <laughs> careful, uh, you, 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 gotta, you gotta be am careful I going to, the alcohol. Am I going too fast? No, 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 go for it. Enter the ninja... This is going to become a running topic. The ninja Have you movies. seen this movie? If I have, I don't. Recall. You don't remember? Okay. Um, I, I have... think I saw the third movie in this series. Oh, we'll talk about we'll that get one. To that. We'll yeah. talk about that one. Um, now I'm not going to say that this is the first ninja splash movie in the United States. I think that belongs to the Octagon, starring Chuck Norris. Remember? Yes. Um, yeah, and that, that, that was, movie I have seen, and that is not a canon movie, but it feels like a canon movie. <laughs> but it's not a canon Which movie. <laughs> we will kind of revisit Chuck Norris later. Later on, yeah. But uh, this is Enter the Ninja, and it's funny because I was watching uh, on the, the documentary. They're going. <laughs> they were going. Apparently, wait, 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 the... I gotta. I gotta be fair here to Mr. Londell. I'm going to disagree with you, but oh. I totally understand where you're coming from. Oh. As a as a historical purist, you know, the, the history geek in me screams when it comes to ninja movies. It doesn't but matter, because this it is comes modern to the, times. You know, karate movie enthusiast in me, <laughs> it's like, get over it. This is, this is basically, you know, fantasy, you know. <laughs> Kind the last thing. ninja was seen 400 years ago, but no, they're still around. They've been in the shadows, and now they're out again. Because that's uh, what ninjas do. Why is... Uh, here's curious. I found out why Franco Nero was in this movie. Hmm. Um, I think they were... They were they were shooting this in the Philippines, and their lead actor was terrible. They had to replace him. And what's the yeah. big city in the Philippines? Is it Manila? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was the Manila Film Festival was going on, and they sent one of the producers or the director out there go to that film festival and, and find, find it someone. and find someone at that film festival to be in this movie. And Franco Nero was at the Manila Film Festival, and they said, "Do you want to be in this movie?" Franco Nero, a great uh, Italian actor, and um, wasn't this? I mean, I mean, the more I drink, the foggier my memory gets. But wasn't this one of the first movies where they they had to start thinking about? Uh, just cast someone who looks right, who could play the role. We could dub their lines yes. later, kind of a he's thing. He's dubbed yeah. later. And I think Frank O'Neill at this point, he's, his, his English had gotten a lot better since mm. the days of Camelot when he did that with Mr. Redgrave. Because yeah. Eddie couldn't speak any English, but he could speak better English now. But I think they still which over dubbed watched, his music because they... Hmm? Which, of course, Camelot with uh, Redgrave... Didn't we watch that on Big L's channel? Big L, remind yeah. me. Yeah. If we didn't, we need to. We should. They, 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 they became a thing on that set. Uh, yes, they did. Uh, Franco Nero and, uh, uh, you know, and uh, he has he has perhaps the greatest mustache in cinema history. My it personal is opinion. An epic okay. <laughs> and here's the thing. You might not be able to tell it right now, but I'm starting to grow in my mustache. Right oh, there you go. Yeah. Franco Nero explained it though. He said that the reason they think they dubbed he wa they wanted a very American sounding voice because. Um, uh, Mechanim, Gol yeah. Golan, we was very, he loved everything American. He wanted all these movies to be very American, and he needed a, a, a straight-up American accent. It's almost like, sure. it's almost too American. Yeah. <laughs> but at least it's not that British-American accent I've heard in certain movies. You know, the British-American accent. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, it, yes. It, it's, it's, the British-American accent is too American, and I, I flag it, and I can tell. Yep. Not, not... <laughs> We'll get into that. Cynthia Rothrock Bring has an age. Bring me a hamburger. <laughs> I have to say, she was interviewed on this documentary, May 2014. Bo Derek, Bo Derek hasn't aged. Seriously, she is, I. Yeah. She is freaking beautiful. Yes. Absolutely. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, Geek Flag said that if it wasn't for all the nude scenes, she wouldn't have a film career at all because she can't act. For no, she can't. No, uh, you know what? It's not even the nudes. Well, okay, I guess that's what led to her popularity. But she wouldn't have even had the nude scenes if it weren't for John Derrick. So we'll talk about that when we get to ten. Yeah, and how Valero nuts is that? That your husband's a director and goes, "Okay, honey, drop you know, a trowel for everyone." To a little see. weird. Do not. Do not. <laughs> underestimate a guy's <laughs> ego and hey check out my wife and how hot she is <laughs> why do you think i suggested the smolder picture <laughs> anyway like i like no, i said but i don't get naked yes well we could talk about only fans another time <laughs> so i guess uh franco near is the white ninja he goes up against the black ninja in this so i believe i correct me if i'm wrong did show kazugi play the bad ninja in this i think he did which is interesting because he plays the good, the hero ninja in the sequel to this, the the loose ninja trilogy, which we'll get into. But I tell you, ninjas were a thing in the eighties. Um, you were a kid in the eighties. You wanted those uh, shurikens, those chi- what we used to call Chinese stars back in the yeah, day. Yeah, throwing stars, throwing stars. And every you know kid they are had still those. Illegal in Australia? Really? Uh, Shad from Shadiversity has uh, has a video where he wants to um, test. The viability of the um, the batarang or the bat shuriken that you see in the Christopher Nolan films, which you know he fabricates in order to test it, and he tests it against like th- uh, throwing daggers and shuriken, yeah, and, and and other things. But he can't use a shuriken because he's in Australia, so he instead uses small. Um, uh, handsaw attachments which basically function the same way i'm like that's fucking brilliant make throwing stars illegal which let's face it are pretty much useless as weapons uh but it's perfectly okay to buy anything else that can no. basically be used the exact same way uh. oh and in chicago they're illegal too Everyone my mother saw. got me one illegally when I was uh, when I was in high school, everyone saw about Ursula Andress in the chat. You should check out the movie She with Ursula Andress. It's an old Hammer movie. We based are going to the... get into a bunch of Ursula Andress films the... later. I'm I'm assuming I have not seen the, the slideshow that's being shown. No, right I know Ursula Andress movies in canon, as far as I know. Let's move oh, on. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of uh, Sybil Danning. My apologies. My okay. apologies. Let's move on to Charles Bronson in oh, okay. Death Wish 2. Okay. Yeah, no. let's get into this. Keeping in mind that the first Death Wish film predates canon, so. Yes, and I don't. I consider the, this to be part one of the canon Death Wish trilogy, which obviously this is a sequel to the original Death Wish. Oh, the plot of this. You want to know the plot? Want me to run it off? Okay, Paul Kersey has moved to Los Angeles which is odd because he moved to Chicago at the end of Death Wish 1, but I guess he, since there he moved to Los Angeles. Look, I, keep thinking I don't there's care this how whole bad hit. a badass you are and how much you, you <laughs> blow up bad guys, you don't stay in fucking Chicago. You're like, fuck this. This is not worth it. I'm going I, to fucking California. I, I, I have this dream that someone will make a Death Wish video game like Rockstar would make it, and it, they would use Charles Bronson's likeness and just have it take awesome, place right? Have it take place after the first movie. Just have it be his Chicago stuff, what he was doing in Chicago. But this will never right. happen, but I would love to see it. But anyway, Death Wish 2, he's in Los Angeles. He gets his daughter out of the uh, mental hospital, where I guess she's still sort of catatonic, but she's been improving. Because, of course, bad things happen to her in oh, Death God, Wish 1. Yes. yes. By Jeff Goldblum and his gang in so, Death Wish some 1. Very, anyway. Some very worse things happen in the second movie. Yeah. And then the... Okay, so the second movie, um, uh, Charles Paul Kersey, the architect, is all out with his uh, fiance, played Was by... Was it the uh, same actress? I don't know. Does... I, I, did, I don't... I, I, never, I didn't even think about that. I don't think so, but I... I'm going to have to I, go back and watch the original. She doesn't Death say anything. Now. She just kind of stares blankly and she wants the she little does. crystal thing on the and table. She has wonderful boobs. Oh. Boobas. Boobas. I should call them yeah, boobas. Yeah. Yeah. She does. So does the, uh, so does his maid. But the trouble is the context of seeing these boobs is an icky, <laughs> is some icky stuff, man. You're like, right. It is. And apparently bit. certain scenes in this movie went on a lot longer in the unrated cut. Like, and they were already long enough in the theatrical. So 
And I'm you like, get the Michael impression Winner, that the what's wrong with is you? like, I'm going along with this, but this is not going to play well. <laughs> Here's what's disturbing. The the actress playing his, uh, like, like older, like, 50-something, like, the older... Yes. His older maid was actually a lot younger, and I'm like, it's like, she has... I Because I, I thought she has a fit body for, for having gray hair, and then I realized, oh, no, wait, they just put makeup on they her face. Her up, so yeah. it's really it's really weird. It's it's really there weird. Is, there is an oddity just, to this, yeah. because they... they, they they were. It seemed like they were of two minds with this movie. It was like, we want to be realistic, okay? We, brutally re- realistic, yeah. which that's one way to go. But at the same time, like you said, casting <laughs> a younger woman so that, you know, she's... But doing her up older. I don't know. It's it. It makes you feel creepy watching. It, it it it's it's. I don't. It's something about the male brain is not processing something when that's happening. That's all I'm gonna say. And it's like. It's right. It's like, man. Yeah, she's kind of hot for an old chick. Wait a minute. And then then is I see. see that, what am I talking about? This and, is a. This is a. You know, and it's a brutal R scene. Yes, and and of course, and then they had. I, I saw her on like the red carpet or whatever mm-hmm. she was being interviewed. Film the you know beautiful beautiful uh, woman, but just it's just weird. Yes. Um. Okay. So anyway, so uh, the, the maid dies as a result of the violations, and um, his daughter who gets dragged away. Okay. First, here's what here's how it all starts. Um, Paul Kersey um is going to go buy his uh, his fiance and his daughter some ice cream. And then some punks steal his wallet. He goes after them. And uh, well, first they snatch the dollar yeah, out of his between, hand. Gonna... Between this movie and yeah. uh, 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 Lemon Popsicle, I want some ice cream already. Fuck. Anyway, so he doesn't. Anyway, so he goes chasing them down and he gets one of them and, and, and get and, you know, takes his switchblade and throws it on the fence with the guy. I don't have your wallet. And he's like, he just gives up and just goes back and pretends like nothing happened. Unfortunately, they have his wallet. They have his driver's license. They know where he's living. They didn't like the fact that he, you know, went after the, the wallet. So th- then they decide to go to his house while he's not there. And I guess he drops his daughter off. And and then she goes in. And then bad things happen. And like I said, she eventually jumps out a window. And so he, the police show up. And Oh, I love how you just kind of gloss over that. She jumps out a window and that's it. Doesn't and impales herself else. on no a on a details. on a spiked fence. Be, yeah. Prior Rod, other horrible she things happening to her. She just gets friggin' impaled on a wrought iron fence yes. with like with like blood. hammer horror levels of blood. It's horrible yeah. and and yes. So and Paul Kersey, he, he's not going to give any information up to the police about what he saw because guess what? He's going on a hunt and he's going to find each of these gang members down himself and hunt them down. There's there's that scene where he meets the guy in the basement. The guy has like a, a cross on his neck or something. He said, "Do you believe oh, in Jesus? Are you you believe in Jesus? Yeah, I do. Well, you're gonna meet him. Bam. <laughs> Bam, um, just... Is this the one where where someone's stealing his car? No, that's three. We'll get to that in a little bit. Anyway, okay. Okay, Death that, Wish I Two. Love that scene. I freaking love that up. scene. Death Wish Two, kind of a a, oh, a, a. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We gotta friggin' savor this. If any of you guys <laughs> saw this movie, saw the movie with Michael Douglas falling down, which yes. honestly we must do a Monday night uh, watch party. I've man. seen falling down. Oh, it's it, it is. Have you more seen John? To, hmm? Have you seen John Q with Denzel Washington? Because some argue that the Robert Duvall cop in that is the same cop from Falling Down, because that's like a similar situation, like a man. I have not. I'm going to have to check that out. I guess guess his health insurance won't pay for his son's heart transplant or something, Mm. and he holds the doctors hostage because otherwise his son is going to die. And then it's like another one of these uh, regular Joe being pushed to the edge. And now it's Denzel Washington's time around. I um, I, uh, uh, I bring that up because... (laughs) Yeah, first we we need to watch that Michael Douglas film Falling Down. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's very relevant, more relevant today okay. than when it was made, I think. Uh, but I feel like they're they're spiritually connected with the Death Wish scenes. Yeah, and uh, actually, the soundtrack to this is of note. Jimmy Page wrote the score to this. Of this um, is going Led to Zeppelin. be a recurring theme, logical Spock. <laughs> there are great boobas in just about every canon film. Uh, I just uh, full disclosure. He it was short notice. He was not available, but I did invite Greg from Fanzine uh, to come on because <laughs> this is 
this topic is right up his alley. Well, we we can always have him on another time if he wants to share his own canon memories. Absolutely, we may but, do a part two if this goes up. But but, as, but as anyway, the, the soundtrack to this was was made by Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. Mm. Did you know that? And I, I actually had to. I I have it. I had to. Th- I had to import it from Japan because I don't know if it had a domestic release on CD. But you know, I know I'm on soundtracks of Birdman sometimes, and this is one of my prized soundtracks. Is the you Jimmy know I gotta Page say I, 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 that is what I really appreciate about soundtracks of Birdman. He has made me appreciate soundtracks all yeah. more. I I was never a big uh, movie score kind of guy. Yeah. I was very much into those 80s soundtracks that had like these pop songs that, you know. And this has a couple of sung songs on it, too. It's like yeah. a very 80s synth kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I, I think that's that's the thing you can almost say about canon. It was very much of its time. Uh, that doesn't say a lot, but it describes every single one of these, uh, these just, films. Just a brutal version of the movie. I am kind of curious because apparently there's a 4K Blu-ray of this that was released that comes on a on a regular Blu-ray with the set. You get the television cut, and you know how they would do television cuts of movies where they would replace yes. some scenes with other scenes. Yes, and I, I'm kind of curious about owning that cut because it might take out some of the more uncomfortable scenes. But leave see, me this is I Greg. See, Greg you know? has has, yeah. has pointed this out that there are a lot of great DVDs out there where you can choose between yeah. the original release theatrical cut and the television cut. Um, back in the day, the Superman Donner's cut was yeah. fabricated from both the, television the original cut. release and the, the television, re- actually different television releases around the world. This was... Yeah. Uh, Pulled yeah. together from fans working together in different countries over the internet. Um, and there is value to that just as much, <clears throat> excuse me, as there is deleted scenes that you can find on, you know, as DVD extras. So, um, in fact, we just recently did a Monday night, uh, uh, Monday night at the movies. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It was, uh, Thursday things on netters network with tom connors we did the the three hour spice diver uh uh at cut of of the david lynch dune right. which was cobbled together from multiple multiple different versions. versions and the television release and uh very very good um so yeah Sorry, um, little 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 side quest there. I'm just going to mention one more thing about this movie. Jill Ireland, um, Bronson's real life wife, was in this as his fiance, mm. and uh, guess who's one of the gang members is uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Is that oh, interesting? Yeah, this was an early role for Lawrence Fishburne. Um, yeah, Netter Netter has uh, a bone to pick with uh, Charles Bronson, and his... well, I have, I have a, a bone to pick with Charles Bronson and Jill Ireland, who's yep. dead now, but. Because Jill Ireland used to be married to David McCollum of the Man from Uncle fame. Yes. And Bronson met her uh, when they were filming. Yep. Uh, I think it was The Great Escape. Yep. And basically stole her away from David McCollum. That's like, he lit. He literally said to her, "I'm going to marry your wife." That's what he said to David McCollum. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that asshole. Yeah. Oh yeah. But anyway, um. You know what? My opinion. McCollum was 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 granted some grace by charles bronson take the fucking bitch that's what i say anyways uh never Am saw I wrong, before. Netter? Nope. see we're, we're, we're gonna get into this anyway though if but, netter um, agrees with me then va salud Funny little bit of side trivia. There are people that kept insisting that Denzel Washington was one of the gang guys Bronson shoots in Death Wish 1. And Denzel Washington says, I was never in Death Wish 1. I guess the actor looks similar. And I think Denzel Washington said, you know, that was before my Hollywood career. I might have been one of those types of guys before, <laughs> before that, which I thought <laughs> was kind Barlow of funny. though says, I've never seen Death Wish 4. You probably We're gonna get didn't into it. miss much. No, we'll it's, a, it's good. We're going to get Is into it? that. Let's move on. <laughs> I definitely saw this one. Sylvia Crystal. I think I saw just about every Sylvia Crystal film. Uh, Skinamax was uh, the greatest <laughs> blessing to a pubescent teen in the 80s. Let me tell you. 
Lady Chatterley's Lover, which I oh, guess Oh, by the way, this movie does not bear any resemblance to the actual book. Just saying. I think the actual book was considered this big scandalous thing back in the day the but I, I think was. i think the basic and it was like was, they had to that, take it to a new level for the, the modern modern audience back then what's what's the big scandalous thing i think i think the husband gets into an accident and is paralyzed he has a young and so wife. his wife starts having an affair well, i yeah. think he basically just he says it's okay because he can't meet her needs that way exactly. and i think that's all it is and yeah. you know i'm not it's 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 yeah. a little icky but it's kind of sweet yes on, on kind of all levels uh but uh, yeah, this movie uh, cast Sylvia Cristal because uh, <laughs> oh, I am not drunk enough to to not think this through before I say it. Um, <laughs> Sylvia Cristal is a very well was God rest her soul. <laughs> uh, she was a very attractive woman. Um, I'm gonna say one word. Whether you follow up on this word. Entirely up to you. <laughs> Emmanuel. That's all I'm yes. going to say. So, Natter knows exactly what I'm talking about. I have no idea. I have no idea about those movies that I would, I would that would be on late at night and I'd be darting my head around. I know my nothing parents about were those walk movies the... I had on VHS and wore out certain places in the videotape. Your head's darting around seeing if anyone's going to be walking through. What you watching there? No! <laughs> Oh, it's it's bad, my friend. It is bad. It is so bad that I know about the uh, the the cable release version of Emmanuel. Oh, and the uh, is there a unrated version? full version, unedited that, version. Is of that Emmanuel. shown in Italy or maybe Spain, someplace like that? I'm thinking. The internet is France. Wonderful for France you. probably it was shown in subtitles. Yeah, there okay. Are subtitles. Uh, it wouldn't have been oh, shown between the, oh, oh, that's another one. Between sub and dub, uh, you might want to pay attention to both because uh, I kind of question the uh, the uh, the translation in a couple of scenes. And there, Ge- Geek uh, Flag, that could be this movie <laughs> that you're describing there because apparently I think the What's husband that? was bad in this version too. I read a synopsis. Uh, Lady Shatterly. And they yeah. frame it like the husband is the bad guy. He went off to war and got paralyzed. Yeah, can't keep her legs closed. Yeah, um, there are a (laughs) number... Why do I know this? There are a number of different edits of this film that, uh, depending on how you look at it, the story is completely different. Um, I would recommend... I can't believe I'm saying this. Read the original story and then watch whatever version of this you choose to watch yes uh, it's a very different story if you if you read it in its original it's, it's context. probably considered and it has literature always now. yes been controversial it has yes. always been controversial it is uh uh <laughs> but it's the kind of thing that i think is 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 worthwhile from a literary standpoint and it is a very worthwhile from a sylvia Cristal naked point of view Just there we saying. go there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I want to. I'll make let a you point. say your piece before I jump into this. One. Yes, because you know a bit more about the origin of this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie. Um, if any of you are familiar online with the Pua community, the pickup artist community, they are obsessed with this picture. They say everything in it is correct. <laughs> about i guess you could argue this guy has one itis he might be what some people would call in the modern vernacular a simp perhaps that's the term i don't know if that's what it is yeah but... i can see you saying that. yeah yeah, Do you yeah, know you know what cool. actress is in this because like she's into yes, him he, no sorry he's into her a little too much and like her friend likes him her friend was played by the actress on you just cut out on us ag boomer the actress did we lose Boomer? I don't know, but you guys have been cutting in and out on me all night, so I just figured it's my headset or something or my internet. It could be. Are you guys hearing Boomer? Because I am not ah. hearing Boomer. Hi. Okay. Can you hear me now? Hey. Yes. Okay. I can hear you now. What did I mess up? The with the actress that likes uh, the the I guess the the title character, the Last American Virgin. Mm-hmm. She was on Twin Peaks, right? She was the secretary. Remember? I think she's in this. Oh. 
Damn, I did not realize that was uh, Kimmy. I think there's a Twin Peaks reference, yeah. Okay, but, okay. Um, this because was supposed... the, the, the girl that he likes, uh, you will remember as the younger abused sister in the uh, um, Amityville horror prequel. Yes. There you can see. See, see. I remember uh, she again, was she was wonderful boobas. She was also the French exchange student in Better Off Dead with John Cusack. The, oh uh, my god, you're right. Yes. 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 And uh, that's a great comedy. This one there's some weird stuff in this movie. It has two tones. I think they're mentioning like you have kind of like a serious yes. tragic tone of this guy not being able to win the girl over and yeah. sacrificing for her and it's not enough. And then you have the other tone where it's like some kind of raunchy Porky's esque yeah. type of movie yes, where like they go to is, see a that is exactly right. This a, this movie is like if you were to take Well, okay. <laughs> I, I first have to go back to the origins of Canon. Something you, you, you overlooked. A movie called Lemon Popsicle, one of the first films that that these uh, two relatives did. What what are their names? Globus and Golan and Globus. Golan and Globus, right? Uh, it was it was called uh, Lemon Popsicle, Lemon Popsicle, and it was exactly almost frame for frame the same movie as the last American version, Virgin, Virgin, except. Depending on which version you're seeing of the origin. Mm, good point. <laughs> Except about 20 to 30 years earlier and in Israel. Israel, yeah. And it took place in the 50s, right? You were saying? I, think, the... I, I feel like it took place in the 50s. If you were to argue that it took place in the 60s, see, here's the thing. The soundtrack, and look at this, what he's got right here. The soundtrack for Last American Virgin. The Cars, Journey, The Police, Ario Speedwagon. This is very, very 80s, right? The soundtrack for uh, uh, Lemon Popsicle is very 50s. Uh, we're talking uh, Bill Haley and the Comets, Little Richard, that kind of stuff. Uh, both excellent soundtracks, but I feel they, they date them now. Whether or not that means it was 50s or 60s in Israel depends. If the if that soundtrack were to date it for the United States, you'd say the 50s. But I don't know if those songs were popular in Israel in the 50s or in the 60s. There is... Don't know. Sometimes in other countries, there is a uh, disparance between... Yes. Uh, when uh, themes are popular in the United States and when they make it to other countries. Japan had their version of the 70s, like in the 80s or 90s. Right. You know, from they, our uh, cultural point of view. Well, it's weird. It's kind of like how in South America their game consoles behind. Like they were getting the PS2 and we were getting the PlayStation 3. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's like you they're. Go. Exactly. It, it's weird how that works with certain countries. But yeah, so, this. Yeah, this the, is a dark the, movie, kind of. I think, the, especially at the end. Well, it's 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 another one of those canon mixed bags, right? Mm -hmm. On the one hand, it seems dark. On the other hand, it's a goofy, off the wall comedy, right? So, uh, I would compare uh, uh, Lemon Popsicle to a combination of Porky's and American Graffiti, right? Uh, this is the, basically the exact same movie. Frame for frame, with a different soundtrack and cast, and, you know, move to the United States. And I think set in the 80s, you know? Yeah, and well, that soundtrack, people said that this soundtrack was a big deal at the time, because they they at least had the pulse on what the kids were listening to. You at least with the music. for crying yes. out loud. Yes. You know, um, that was actually a little early for their career here in the United States. No, they when, were when the last uh, virgin was was released. Whoever picked out these songs knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this this movie had a following, um, and even here in America, but people are always thrown off by that ending. But to be fair, 
one could argue the ending's realistic, but why does she? Because basically, his best friend is seeing her. She gets pregnant, and then she decides to go in for a procedure to get rid of the child. We, you know, uh, and he decides to support her during that. He pays for it. He brings her stuff in the hospital, and then at a party, she's back with the old boyfriend. Spoiler, yeah, sorry. which of course <laughs> is a huge heartbreak for him. End of the film. I, I would have done it differently. I would have had her been with a different guy, but guy who was probably similar to the old boyfriend. I think her going with the old boyfriend after going through that experience, that struck me as odd. You know, it's interesting. That, I mean, regard, my, you know. My take yeah. on it is probably different than a lot of people uh, have seen the movie. Um, I saw this and I'm like, oh, fucking good. He dodged a damn bullet here. You know? <laughs> good. But he's... She but is he's... she is damned goods. She's never going to be any good. She can't fucking learn. <laughs> Look, I I dated a girl like this before Netter. Mm-hmm. I I've told this story. You know, uh, she she and I were dating. I treated her like a queen, and then she goes back to her ex boyfriend who abused her. Yikes! And I was busted up this and i made a a a, a sardonic joke about it i'm like look if i knew she wanted to get beat up i could have heaved a chair at her from time to time (laughs) and all my friends said no you couldn't she is damaged goods you're better off without her and then netter came along and i'm like and you've been right they're all right you know and i i could not help but project that onto this movie and seeing that and it's like God, that's tragic, but you know what? Better you figured it out now before, you know, you got married to the bitch, you know? And that's true in both versions of this movie. That's the funny thing. Last American Virgin is literally a remake uh, yeah. made by the same filmmakers, you know? That's why I had mentioned in the documentary some guy made a point that he brings her a bag of oranges and a Christmas tree while she's in the hospital and he says, is that an Israeli thing? Because they didn't understand that. Yeah, it's like, no, no, that I, I don't think you're, I don't <laughs> think you're, descri- you're, you're explaining it clearly enough. <laughs> Let me, so so here's the scene. The, the girl that he is in love with has been dating his best friend and his best friend is a fucking jag off. Yeah. And he gets her pregnant and then breaks up with her. Yeah. You know, the whole, how do I even know if I was the only it's one? Mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, and he was, but fuck it. Uh, so he, this, the main character who's been pining for all this time, says, fuck it. I'll, I'll take care of you. I'll, I'll make this right. Gets her a place to stay, you know, ends up stealing a bunch of money in order to take care of. Well, Actually, in, in Last American Virgin, he gets an extra job as a pizza delivery guy to pay for it. Yeah. But in, the, in, in, in Lemon, uh, uh, what is it? Popsicle. Lemon, Popsicle. Lemon Popsicle, thank you. Yeah, I'm getting a little little tipsy here. He steals the money, huh? He steals the money. and you know, Well, he borrows the money from his boss. He steals the money from his mom. You know, it's... it's oh, that's horrible. Yeah, it, it kind of is. Uh, and in the span of the film, you don't actually see the fallout of that. You figure it's probably not good. Uh, but he uh, he pays for the... Oh, fuck it. I'm going to say it. He pays for the abortion. Right. And he, he drops her off. He's not allowed to stay. He comes back to pick her up. Takes care of her through the convalescence. Uh, the next time he's going to see her is a week later at her birthday party. He shows up at her birthday party, goes to see her. She's making out with the the, the ex boyfriend who got her pregnant. Yeah, best friend. Um, and that's basically the same story in both films. <clears throat> okay, now that we've done the setup, when he goes to pick her up from the abortionist, yeah, <laughs> in uh, Last American Virgin, for whatever reason, he brings. A Christmas tree and oranges, which is weird to say the least, right? <laughs> but in the original version, it wasn't much better. He had a friggin' watermelon. And it's like, why? Fresh Wouldn't fruit? flowers have made more sense? I know, right? The, the, who was it who said, um, 
didn't understand it. Thought maybe it was a, a, a Jewish thing. No, that was the guy in the documentary that said the that. Guy in the <laughs> Even Look, they were talking no, about it wasn't. Something. It absolutely wasn't because watermelon didn't make any fucking sense either in the original version. It's it's yeah. fucking bizarre. Oh well, it's it's one of those things that makes it almost kind of real, right? Because yep. in reality, you don't plan these things out. The reason he had a Christmas tree and oranges is fucking irrelevant. It, it just he just happened to because of reasons you don't see. You know, <laughs> it's it's reality doesn't work the way movies do. I think we all no. intuitively realize that. Uh, I think we try to live our lives as though it's the idealized, just like in the movies. And it doesn't work just like and in the movies. in some movies. ways, this movie slaps you in the face and gives you a dose of reality at the end. Yes, so no, that's, <laughs> maybe that's the whole point. Actually, you may have just hit on it, Boomer. There you go. I <laughs> think I spent way <laughs> longer on Last American Virgin uh, than I should have. But I'll tell you what, this is one of those, if you are a film enthusiast... It's worth checking out both versions of the film and comparing them. They're yeah. almost identical. Ten to Midnight. Another Charles Bronson film. I've seen the promos for it, never seen the movie itself. I had rewatched this a couple years ago. I think I watched it when it was relatively new. We rented it or something. I do not like this movie because, mm-hmm. again, much like Last American Virgin, I think it's it's getting a little too real. Usually in movies when you have your psycho serial killer murdering the women, I can't explain it. There's like a filter or something. Do you understand? Yes. Like there's a... You usually cut a, away from certain scenes. Or the cut away. Certain... It's not even that cut away. It's like... Oops. Or Sorry, like, guys. you know, the, 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 the teenagers are obnoxious. Yeah. And yeah. the killer is more interesting. And this, I, I found the killer to be relatively just disgusting even though he could probably pass for a regular guy and just the, the women he's going Wait, after real quick and not that let, anyone deserves to be murdered, but these women you really real quick. So I can yes. say goodnight to, to Mattanui. I'm sorry if I already missed you, but uh, yeah, I know, I know that, that uh, you go to bed earlier. Take care. Hope you, uh, you know, later on, I'll drop the link for the, uh, the rumble channel. Go check out the rest of the stream. on, on rumble later on. Take care, buddy. In fact, this movie is almost a... Oh, 10 to Midnight is actually a really good movie. It gets real, I agree, but you can't help but cheer Bronson on with what he does. I, no, I, I understand, and I guess this movie has its fans. It's a, it's a, you guys it's a, it's, are already it's, it's, implying to me that this is the kind of movie that you need to know what you're getting into and be in the movie. I think so. Yeah. I could argue, though, there's a line in the first Dirty Harry movie about how, how when he, he says he shot someone... How'd you know he was going to be trying to, you know, go after that woman? Well, when he's running around with a knife and a hard on naked, naked with a knife and a hard on, I pretty figure he's not collecting for the Red Cross. And that's kind of this movie. That's basically the kind of guy Bronson actually, is going yeah, after. You just, movie. you're just, you're actually just selling this movie to me, man. I, yeah, but it's for not. A movie I'll put you it didn't t- like. I'm, I'm actually thinking I want to see I, it. It's, man. it's very strange, especially toward the end with the other nursing students. I felt very bad for these women in this movie. And I guess you go, we sure should feel bad intense. for all, all the people that get attacked in movies. Well, you do and you don't. Like, you can put filters, and I think, like, no, no it's it's hard for me to explain. It's There was a tone in it, and again, it's like what we were saying with Last American Virgin. Maybe it was a little bit too real yeah. for me, I think, in its portrayal, because this is probably how it is in real life, how, well, how these killers are. You know, There's nothing something... glamorous about a serial somebody killer True. or whatever. It's something it's nothing, I didn't and it's something say uh, yeah. Last American Virgin, and yeah. more more specifically, uh, uh, Lemon Popsicle. Uh, it was semi autobiographical. You know, it was it was based on mm. uh, Menachem's um, child. You know, not childhood, oh, okay. but his coming Team. of age. Right. Uh, a lot of it was based on on things. I don't know how much of it, how much of it was literal and much of it was romanticized but um it does seem real and 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 i think that's that's a good thing you know yeah. if that's if that's the story telling and yeah. it's real real uh 
insofar as uh, remember I did mention it was like American graffiti meets Porky. So the American graffiti part is probably spot on. The Porky's part is <laughs> probably the more idealized version of it, you know? Yeah. Anyway, though, like I said, this movie does have its fans, and you may like it, especially if you're a Bronson fan. Um, but let's move on. we got a lot to get through. What is this? Better Off Dead. Had one Crazy Summer and Gross Point Blank are a part oh, at the same time. I haven't like, seen One Crazy Summer in years. i got to check that one out again. I think of other Cusack movies. I remember um, Say Anything, The Sure Thing, which is a favorite of mine, actually. I do I'll tell you sure what, thing. Say Anything is probably one that's going to have to come up on the uh, Monday Night Movies. Because that's one that uh, time tends to skew in your memory. You need to be refreshed on what the actual story was. You need to be refreshed on a lot of these 80s movies. They hold up a lot better than we give them credit for. Oh, have you ever seen this one, House of Long Shadows? I have not. I have seen portions okay. of it. I haven't I, either. I, I, I have to see it because <laughs> this is... Well, go ahead. I You're probably going to cover all the ground. John I Carradine, know. Vincent Price... Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee, so all in the same movie. All okay. of the surviving uh, uh, Hammer and uh, American, American, the American and British film. horror actors are in this movie. In, in a little bit tongue-in-cheek kind of uh, uh, pastiche to the to the films they had been in. The, the the guys making the film got very angry. They said, "Okay, you're going to get these guys. That no one's going to care." Desi Arnaz Jr. was in this movie. Oh, that's funny. Yep. And what was funny about this is that he said, uh, now, well, great, we have a PG-rated horror movie. That's going to sell tickets. <laughs> he was making it sarcastic. Was, it was, <laughs> the, the, what I saw of this, it was, okay, you think of Peter Cushing, you think of uh, yeah. Vincent Price, you think of Christopher Lee, and then think of them as parodies of themselves. Right, and that's probably what this is. And to be fair... I don't know what kind of movie they could have made at this point. Because I think if you had had one of these actors oh, yeah, yeah. in like a straight up horror movie, it could work. But when you're having it be this reunion special, it doesn't quite work. <laughs> Do you understand? I haven't seen it though, so maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It looks like a prototype for the Clue movie. It's maybe. definitely. If you know, they... this okay. your list of of these movies is becoming uh, a subset of my watch films. Yeah. This could have been maybe instead of a horror movie, a murder mystery film. Yeah, I'm, I'm, if that's if that's not what this was, that might have I'll been. I'll tell you what, the two are very yeah. closely linked. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they could have been, had like a moody theme to it, and having these actors in it, that might have been better. And that PG probably wouldn't have heard, heard it as much. Horror Master of the Past with Desi Arnaz Jr. Well, yes. Uh, I don't, you know, right. I got to be honest with you. My 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 biggest memory of 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 Desi Arnaz Jr. was from the Brady Bunch. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> the strongest man on earth, Lou Ferrigno. You gotta give him points. This guy was in shape. <laughs> he was. Look, you know, he and Arnold, both of them. I'm sorry. Uh, if they were to see my channel, uh, they they might come after me. But uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say they were both fucking juicing. Just saying. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Lou Ferrigno seems seems I don't know. I don't know. I like like he's put together like maybe he is just those one in the million men. I don't know. That that looks like it that. it helps that he had at the time of, of the filming of this like less than two percent body fat, but uh I'm sorry. Yeah, you don't get muscles like that without a little bit of uh let's say enhancement. Look Arnold Schwarzenegger, I, I, here's a big shocker for you guys. Uh, look at Arnold Schwarzenegger's earliest um, photographs where he's, like, uh, posing, showing off his muscles. He's standing in knee-deep water. The hmm. reason is because he couldn't grow his calves. And he had silicone implants. Oh, is that really true? To, yes. Yes, it was. And it was legal... Uh, for, for competition at the time. So it is what it is. I have good calves, so I guess I should be thankful for that. Um, uh, but, yeah, yeah, I used to have pretty good calves myself. I used to do, uh, after yeah. I do my workout, 
uh, I would go stand on uh, the front steps of the uh, the uh, the high school I went to, and I would uh, do the whole you know you know lifts you know where my feet are right on the edge of the st step and yeah. uh, up and down yeah until my yeah. calves were burning yeah. and then oh, I drive my bike home. It's interesting. Mr. Lanzel said that uh, I guess juicing was legal when they were competing. Wow, I didn't know that. Um, That's interesting. I I actually was unaware of that. I, there was a part of me that thought that it was always illegal and they had to get around it. But um, and honestly, I think here's a prediction. Side quest, guys. I believe that there is going to be a um, a change in the rules for many sports because uh if you have laws and rules or whatever you want to call them, against juicing for different sports especially weightlifting and now we're doing all this trans bullshit how the fuck do you maintain that shit tell me i can't you know juice up you know yep. when when gertrude over here is shooting up in order to compete just saying. Good point. I didn't think about that. Um, right, side quest. Let's get back to Hercules. Okay, so apparently Her there are two films I didn't know about. Well, th we'll get into the next one, but Sybil yeah. Danning, I guess, is in this movie. Sybil Danning, <laughs> guys, I believe it or not, I was I was uh, late coming to the party on Sybil Danning. For me, <laughs> Sybil Danning immediately brings to mind uh the uh the the mini series uh v or maybe v the final battle i forget but she was one of the visitors um holy smokes just saying <laughs> and then i started checking out her movies what was the what was the 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 nazi wolf film that she was in oh was that um elsa she wolf the ss is that was she in that very good, Elsa She Wolf of the S. I think that's what yes. it was called. Don't don't quote that, me on that. No, I, you're right. Okay, you're right. Okay. I couldn't. I, I, I've not I, seen I'm fuzzy, that. but you 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 combed out the edges. Yes, very good. Yeah, that was Rob Zombie's fake Rindhouse trailer. It was a it was a right. S, it was one of those types of knockoffs, <laughs> except it was werewolf women of the SS. Was, <laughs> yeah, wow, wow. I'm just gonna say wow. Um, I don't know who the not, other actress not, was in this. She was nice looking too. From what I could tell, just saying. Um, apparently, though, Lou Ferrigno. I think I watched some documentary about him when he was getting very angry because I think they, the Italian people making this for Golden Globes, they they were wanting to sex it up, give him like nude scenes with the ladies, and he's at this point he was a family man. He's like, I'm not doing that. He's, you know, <laughs> I want this to be a family film. It is a it is a tightrope, right? Because you yeah. almost feel like. There's there's reason for putting all the adult material in there and then doing a family friendly edit of it later. Oh, that's funny. Just my opinion. Uh, you know, not to bring this up, but since let's be honest, we're already sinking here. Do you remember there was a pirates movie made years ago that had uh, various adult stars in it, and apparently there was a version of it that came out without without the pornographic scenes in it. And then there was a, a version of it that came out uh, with them. And a friend of mine had rented it and said, Oh, you know, there's a version of those. There's like a, like a PG rated version or he's like, well, I hate to think there was a word. There's a more explicit version than the one I saw. <laughs> there, uh, I, I, I don't know about that specifically. You know that there are a number of, um, shall we call them adult parodies films <laughs> that um, if you were to take out all the sex scenes are actually really good movies. Uh, yeah. I have, I have made the, uh, the, the comment about um, this. I, I think it's called something like this is not a Star Trek porn parody. Um, and if you take out all the sex scenes, it's actually a really good episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. It's okay. really, really good. And it tells you that the, the, the people in the porn industry care more about the canon of Star Trek than the holes that are doing it now. Just saying. Probably. 
By know? by by the way, are you aware of the bear scene from this movie? There's a scene where that Hercules is one of the gets, scenes I have seen. Yes, he gets into a fight with a bear that I guess kills his, I guess his adoptive father. So and then let he, me let me. He gets ex- so angry, he throws the bear. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Let me explain for the audience that may not have seen this. It is an incredible scene of <laughs> of Lou Ferrigno fighting a bear, but they do it by splicing together scenes of <laughs> Lou Ferrigno. A real bear and a dumbass in a bear costume. It is <laughs> the most wonky bullshit I've ever seen, and it is hysterical, and I love it. And he throws him out into space. And he throws him out into space. Yes. Out of space. I guess I'm thinking this was made because of Superman. There's, they wanted a Superman there movie to be an element. So I I don't know because I didn't know there was two movies. I've seen <laughs> multiple scenes and didn't know they might have possibly come from two different movies. There are scenes and 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 first think of the uh, the original Clash of the Titans, right? Yes. Where you have some uh, you have owl who is a uh, clockwork owl, you know. Uh, Hercules fights these steampunk uh, clockwork monsters. Yes. For reasons, I guess. I don't understand, but uh, have not seen these movies, and my curiosity is up. Right up there with Weed Shark, I feel like I need to see these fucking movies. <laughs> okay. Well, why? Why Revenge of the Ninja. On a plane? And we haven't seen uh, Ouija Shark 2 yet. Just saying. <laughs> Ouija Shark 2. Okay. This is Revenge of the Ninja. It's funny you mentioned we bring this up because yes. um, I was watching, again, in this wonderful documentary I was watching where, where the, the guys Michael said. Dudikoff era yet, have we? No, we're not here okay. yet. We'll get okay. there. We got, we got, uh, we got stuff to get through. That's why I'm trying to bring it along. I'm in no anyway, fucking hurry. You th- said you had all night, so we're gonna. I, we're gonna this is show this Kas- out. Kasuji is in this, and okay. I guess he and 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 he's the uh, Japanese martial artist, and he's he's in this, and he's the good ninja, and there's an evil ninja. Uh, apparently, I was watching the documentary. They said. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. You have seven weeks to shoot this thing, and the script isn't that good. <laughs> so this is uh, another, apparently the script was rewritten. But this is ahead. another recurring theme of of these films. <laughs> the budgets were minuscule. Yes, and honestly, you can kind of tell. But at the same time, when you know what the budget is, and then you look at the movie, you go. Actually, they did pretty good. Yes. So that, that, it, that shit budget they had, every fucking dollar of it is up on the, the screen. I think this is actually pretty... This is a good film. I, I was actually engaged. There is a fight scene in a playground. While there are little kids around, he's fighting the bad guys. Yeah. And I'm saying there are some actually good, competently directed action scene in this for such a low budget. This is sort of on the level of stuff you might be getting out of Hong Kong at the time, too. Yeah. I mean, it has that feel to it. Um, I, I've enjoyed what I've seen so far of this movie. Yeah, I have to finish it after the stream or tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Menachem, what was his last name? Golan? Menachem Golan. Yes, thank yes. you. Uh, that, that I should have known. What could be a more Jewish <laughs> And Yoram Globus. It'd be funny if it was Yoram Glo- Golan, right? That would be, right, right, right. <laughs> be a mouthful. No, Menachem Golan. Uh, I think they were related too. They were cousins. Yes, they yes. were. Yes. Uh, Menachem was older, but yes, they were cousins. Menachem said that. Um, what is cousin Menachem's razor? <laughs> Menachem's razor. Oh, gee, better. <laughs> this is why I love you, sweetie. <laughs> Menachem said that. Uh, he said they ought for later on after later in this timeline uh they are millions of dollars for for his movies and he was like i didn't know what to do with this kind of movie he said i i i would have felt like uh like a thief taking this money it's i i you know i i couldn't spend this much money on a movie and you know you, you mentioned uh 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 a uh uh Behind the scenes or a documentary that you watched. 
Yes. One of the things he said was, um, uh, you know, when they would do lunch or whatever, they would yes. order takeout. Yes. And, and eat it. Eat uh, in while the place. They were, yeah. None of these expensive. None of these fancy expensive lunches. Yeah. Uh, he didn't yeah. rent limos or you get your fucking ass there. Your job is to be there and film. He's and. Saying. I got to say, no schmoozing. Cheap. It's let's get to work. Yes. These were cheap <laughs> ass films, but I respect the fuck out of his, his ethic financially. Work, work ethic. Yeah. This and, is a good and movie. Honestly, yeah. some of these movies, yes, they were cheap. They were B films. They, they look like shit, but that lends a kind of kitsch to them. We'll get into that more this, when we get into the zombie film. There are zombie movies? Yeah, he okay. did some of the Living Dead. Uh, uh, oh, we'll yeah. we'll get into that. That's yeah, not. Yeah. I know. I know what you're talking about. But exactly. Okay. But I, I just love we'll zombie running here. through the the gate and bursting. And no, dust. that's not. That's not Golden Globus. Yes, it is. Not Return of the Living Dead. Well, I don't have it on here, so we ain't talking about well, it. Well, you don't have one it on here. Did, we won't talk about it. But one it of was, them produced me. the Night of the Living Dead remake, which I rather enjoy. That was a good oh. remake. Um, but that was after good. Canon Let's fell talk apart. about that too. But yeah, yeah, but yeah. That fell apart because this is after Canon. We're just doing. We're doing the Canon period. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, Revenge you got a lot of the to Ninja. get through. Look, Tell good movie. Everything. Frankly speaking, I think this is how when the ninja whole ninja thing really took off in the United States. All the kids were obsessed with ninjas, and look at that poster. I I need to get a, co a, a copy of this. That poster. Let's face it. This okay. is there's there's flames of, coming out of his hand. Okay. All of your <laughs> historic uh, misconceptions about what ninjas are kind of starts yeah. here. Yeah. Anyways, um, but. Good, good little action flick. I've not finished yet. Maybe I'll hate the ending after I watch it. But let's see. <laughs> the Wicked Lady. <laughs> Here hey, we no go. Way. Here we go. Star Trek: yes. The Next Generation fans, Marina Sirtis. Uh, let's see your boobas. Marina Sirtis, I, I think, it was on Red Letter Media. They showed a clip from some convention where she was almost in tears, so grateful for the Star Trek fans giving her career a second chance with TNG. Yeah. And I realized that before TNG, she was starring in movies like this and Death Wish 3, where <laughs> these were not the most highest caliber pictures. Uh, same guy that did Death Wish 2 did this movie, and he, and they, they yelled at him. I think it was Michael Winner, is that his name? They were, they were complaining because they said, you could have had a legitimate, fun, period piece movie, but you had to have that whip scene in there where Marina Sirtis is getting her top whipped off and her boobs are flying around everywhere. Yeah. This could have been a, a legitimate, uh, taken seriously movie. She has and, another and scene where that. she's uh, she's getting um, um, uh, forcefully... Um, well, she's got another nude scene in another movie where she's We'll get to uh, it. Not, we'll not, get to it. Oh, you've got a slide, you got that. Yeah, we'll get to it. It's on Real here. quick, Jesse Guajardo says, Troy, Little Caesar's Pizza, a thing when Revenge Ninja was made. Jesse Guajardo, you're, 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 you're telling me something I already know because I worked at Little Caesar's at that time. Just Marina saying. showed more than boobies in this, says Mr. Lancel's groovy movies. Okay. That's right. I've not seen she, The Wicked she was, Lady. She was a uh, bushy lady. Oh, Just my saying. goodness. Okay, but Faye Dunaway's in Keep this. Keep in mind and... at the time, okay, so modern day women like to do all the take all the hair off thing for reasons I don't know why. Uh, 70s and 80s women, you wanted, uh, you wanted to, to see the bushy bushy. It does look like a Lady Zorro movie. <laughs> kind of does. That's not it's, what the movie is. That's or a the, Scarlet the, Pimpernel or something like that. Yeah, real quick, like... this is something... I'm surprised you haven't mentioned this yet, Boomer. One of the things that, that Canon Films used to do was create these concept... Uh, 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 what do you call them? Uh, lobby cards or... Yes. Or, or whatever... Yes. Advance of even having the rights to do the fucking movies. This is this this poster here yeah. is probably what they sold the movie on. 
They didn't have a script yet. They didn't even know what the movie was about yep. yet. Probably. <laughs> they had no fucking. Give us the money for distribution. They start. Then they use. And the guess what? We got with. Faye Dunaway, and uh, she's gonna be looking like this. Uh, I'll I'll see that movie. <laughs> right. Faye Dunaway uh, was the uh, was the uh, the name that drew you to uh, Supergirl. Just saying. Because who yeah, the hell knew who Ellen they, they was? Kind of wasted in that movie, I thought. Uh, be- better. And they Gene Hackman wasn't wasted in the whole Superman series? Just saying. We're, we're going to get there because we're going to get to that one, too. Superman um, 4, yeah, exactly. We're going to get there. Well, enough to say that might be on Rumble by the time we get to it, though. <laughs> um, Sahara, have you seen this one with Brooke Shields? Are you fucking kidding me? It's, they said they Given wanted to do the... Given my age range... And Brooke Shields. <laughs> you think there's a fucking Brooke Shields film I didn't see? As oh, a, did you a like it? Because I, I, I heard it was billed as um, the Great Race meets Lawrence of Arabia meets uh, the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> that is a fucking perfect analogy. That just told you everything you need to know about this movie. That is absolutely true. You're right. <laughs> Although it, it doesn't raise to the level of Lawrence of Arabia, it's fucking clear that's what they were going for. Was it any good? Well, Brooke Shields. That's all I need to say, right? Yes, she's a, a nice-looking lady, um, but yes. She um, always it's... has been, absolutely. She Do was in mid- mind that she is about my age range, so even the younger stuff, I was her contemporary, just saying. She was in Midnight Meat Train. Did you ever see that movie? <coughs> Clive Barker film. You think Clive I haven't Barker? Seen it? You oh, you're a Clive you think Barker there's a Clive fan. Barker film I haven't seen? Come on, man. Okay, uh, she was the art the art dealer lady. Remember? She, and I think Bradley Cooper's in that. And they said, I yeah, know there's, she, there's a lot of cameos in that movie. It's like the fuck are they doing? In this and movie? and he said she might come on to you. Uh, and he says, uh, and he's like. Does she come on to the young women photographers, the young men? Oh, it doesn't matter. I think he said she shall do both. Just... You know what? We'll have to do a read to that movie because um, it's a terrifying oh, a lot movie. of reasons. A lot of reasons. It's a terrifying movie. It is. All right. So anything left to say about Sahara? Uh, if you if you want to see boobas. She have a mustache in it. Brooke... No. Well, it's a fake mustache when she's driving because women can't be race car drivers. Uh, <laughs> so, check out, sorry, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. It's it, there. It's a this piece. is a disjointed film, but for Brookshield fans, you got to see it. Okay. Um, breaking. for the break of your life, breaking. Yup. Okay, I've not seen this movie. I've heard of it. Oh my is, god, you need to see this movie, Boomer. It is I, I will watch it at some point. It wasn't on the streaming. I, I did watch the sequel. We'll get to that. Um is this and people said that at the time, was this the introduction of hip hop culture on the on the big screen, or am I wrong here? No, it was not. But okay, I what would was it? argue that it was the, the touchstone that launched the public. Can you hear me? So, real quick, yeah, yeah. So okay. real quick, uh, what you got to... Adolfo Quinone, right? Shadu, okay, played the role of Oz. And Michael Chambers played Turbo. Um, this was... I can't even begin to tell you the cultural touchstone this was. If it weren't for this movie, you would not. There would be no gangsters paradise. There would be no um, rap culture. There'd be no IT in uh, what was that? Uh, what was the show you watched, Nutter? That that was the 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 cop, oh, the cop show. Uh, uh, SUV. SUV. Um, uh, SVU. SVU. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, yeah, so more... Um, special victim. He would not be a thing, uh, because uh, Ice T. Oh gosh, the soundtrack for this, as you can see, 
I'm a very white boy, but this film got me to love back in the 80s. Uh, Ice-T had a song, I don't even remember, well, song, it's a rap, right? Um, I even remember Drunken Haze, I remember. Once upon a DJ's task was just to play records. What could you ask? But then came remixes. Which was too. Drove some DJs mutt. <laughs> some <laughs> nuts. Yeah, I am slur my words big time now. Um, yeah, great soundtrack. This this movie had me young, uh, high school age Troy taking out the cardboard uh, sheets and break dancing uh, in front of my high school i kid you not uh, the popping and the butt and the spinning and i even did the spinning on my head type of thing um it was uh, and this is i bought my first boom box to be honest with you this was a great movie with great cultural significance and um this this movie is probably why I deride Bocosos so much because this movie had a diverse cast with a cultural appeal across all cultures. <coughs> it was an incredible movie. Low budget, yes. Nobody who was known at the time will tell you one thing. Adolfo Quinones in this movie. Uh, you see him in much else besides the two Breakin' films, but he was a, uh, a dancer that influenced many, many Hollywood films. He was a choreographer for a lot of uh, different films. Um, not 100% positive. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he uh, had some influence on uh, the movie uh, Flashdance. Um, and and um, those of you that were uh, there for my of Xanadu, Adolfo Quinones, background dancers in the, uh, you know, the. the the big uh, um, denouement uh, ep uh, scene in 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 uh, in Xanadu. So, yeah. And we, oh Boomer, we got to bring you back in, don't we? I got to get back to my streamyard. Hold on, I was looking at some other things. Uh, where are you? Streamyard, streamyard, streamyard. Uh, there you go. Sorry, man. All right. let's bring you back in. Yeah. Thank you. No, I, I had to leave StreamYard. You were clipping on me for some reason. I think it was on my end. I think I, it's my That's crappy fair. Internet. I was talking. I, I was I was kind of right. geeking out a little bit about, you know, uh, Shabadoo. Uh, there's, some, Quinones. there's some great dancing in this movie, huh? There is. <laughs> and, and, and look, uh, Adolfo Quinones and Michael, and Michael Chambers, uh, you can credit both of them. Look, don't don't let me sell Lucinda Dickey short, okay? She uh, was not a dancer, however. She was a gymnast. And uh, she had to learn all the dance routines. And what's great about this movie is you can kind of see her awkwardness as uh, Ozone, the character, is trying to teach her the dances and Turbo is just mocking her and thinking she's a waste of time. Oh. Um, it, is, it is absolutely friggin' brilliant because it kind of mirrors the real world that, that these, these characters were in. Um, uh, Lucinda Dickey, beautiful woman, <laughs> weird 80s haircut in this movie, uh, but is still uh, very attractive. She had the the grace and the um, the the pliability of a gymnast, which was awesome. 
and she brings that to this role. Um, brilliant, brilliant film. And uh, she came from a rich family in this, and she's hanging out with the Riff Raff. Is that right? Is that what her her father disapproved? That you usual could, thing. You could you <laughs> could argue that it's uh, all the white girl kind of thing. They right. Kind of overdo it, and that's fine. That's fine. Yes, she's the rich girl who who who, who doesn't uh, doesn't belong, and uh, uh, ozone kind of mm, kind of falls for her. And Turbo is like, dude, you're thinking with your dick, not your, <laughs> not your head. No, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm just tipsy enough uh, to be very loose with my language. This is a, a fairly adult, uh, excuse me, uh, a fairly uh, 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 family-friendly film. Yes. Uh, much as I, uh, much to my disappointment. Uh, Lucinda Dickey doesn't get nude in this movie. Um, it's a, like I said, very family friendly. Um, I, I highly recommend this movie. It's, 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 it's good stuff. Yeah. So that's breaking and we're going to get to the sequel in a little bit. Uh, do you want to think about making the grade? Making the grade. Apparently this is the first time Andrew Dice Clay's personality was shown was created i think it was for this movie and he kept it after okay now that you tell me that i've seen the movie i have zero don't remember it no. okay it's fine we'll move on then no that's okay you didn't see it either no okay, I, I, that's no. why i figured there gonna be someone on here that neither of us have seen i haven't that's seen this awesome. one the naked face with, with roger, roger moore, moore. i'm what? shocked i know <laughs> this was I... after he had stopped jump but being james bond maybe i don't know this is I think it's a thriller. I don't think it's supposed to be like a spy I, I wasn't, movie. I, I, but... full, full disclosure, I wasn't a huge Roger Moore fan, so I wouldn't have run out of my way. For, for Some Roger people Moore. love Roger Moore. He's their favorite Bond. Um, I think the first five Roger Moore Bond movies are very solid. They're, they're good films. The last two were turkeys. <laughs> and, <laughs> right? And, oh, especially View to a Kill. Oh, no. That's not even fun. That's not even good, bad, like, as people say, you know. Uh, so, Mr. Londell is recommending making the grade, so I need to check that out. Okay, it might Do be a good a one. you slide for that? Can you go back to it yeah, real quick? Yeah, making the grade. Here's the poster. Damn, it, it, I it might don't remember it. It, it might be a good familiar. movie. I just haven't seen it. That's it all. sounds just, so yeah. familiar. I must have seen it. I just... I, you, or the other thing, too, is... This particular poster probably isn't jogging my memory. You do not need a big budget to make a great comedy. I agree. You don't. Absolutely. You, you, a lot of comedies and horror movies don't need huge budgets. They don't usually have huge budgets. That sounds budgets. like a bootleg yeah. James Bond film. Uh, <laughs> hold on to that thought, uh, Jesse, because we have a James Bond theme. Excuse me, a, a James Bond stream coming up uh, with oh. uh, Michael French at some point in the future. We're going to talk about the fake James Bond movie, Never Say Never Again. We'll at least touch on it, I'm sure. I, Actually, I, I used to I call no that doubt. a fake Bond movie, but after after the disaster of the last couple Craig movies, I don't Dude, even know if I can even attack that one. Anymore. I went to the theater to see that movie, and I liked it. That never was, Say Never Again. Wasn't that the one with uh, Kim Basinger? Yes, she was the Bond girl in that. I think she that was, was fucking hot for her at the time. Um, I it was a remake of Thunderball, and I'm like, why don't I just watch Thunderball? I know, right? Well, because... I, I the actor they got for Blofeld was good in that. That was um, what's his name? Um, Swedish actor in Bergman movies. Oh, f- was he the one playing the the video game with? Uh... No, he was the guy with the cat. Oh, oh the the oh. Bond's arch nemesis. Anyway, right, 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 right. right. Uh, Sword of the Valiant. We did a rewatch stream with Big Al, so you and uh, Netter have seen this one. That's right. That's yes. right. This so we don't probably don't have to spend too much time on this, but Sean this Connery. Sean Connery film. Yeah. And it's a retelling of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Not yep. plays fast and loose with the original poem, um, but it's an Thorian, you know, story. Right? This was a, a film that if you were. Uh, a young person in yep. the eighties. Yep, and you that was saw me. This on cable, or even on regular TV, they would show it. It would just plop oh, on really? regular TV. Uh, uh, later, early, first originally on cable, then later on regular TV. This yeah, was the yeah. kind of movie that uh, Sword fit and right in with things like Krull and, and Conan and, 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 and things like that. Yeah, this is Sword and Sorcery. 
Um, unique from those, though, in that it, even though it's an unspecified country, I'm assuming it's England. They mentioned Christendom, so I'm figuring this is medieval yes. England. And yes. and uh, Sean Connery well, shows up as the Green Knight. Assuming, you know? assuming this is about uh, Sir Gawain and, and so forth, yes. yeah, obviously this is an Arthurian story, so yeah. I have the Blu-ray of this, and this is notorious Ooh. because MGM, I forgot to mention, at this point, MGM was a distributor for a lot of canon movies. Like, I mm. think they, they I think they sold Revenge of the Ninja to them, and they MGM was very pleased with Revenge of the Ninja, and it did well, so they were starting to become the distributor. This Some guy who worked for Canner for any of these scenes, like, is this, is this the apocalypse happening now? That MGM <laughs> is, is, this is a major movie studio working with canon pictures. You know what? Um, you but, just yeah. reminded me of something that I should probably bring up right now, uh, for those of you that you know are going out on the internet and going, okay, what films are canon films? Keep in mind, canon did distribute films that they didn't have production right. of. So uh, uh, Boomer set me straight on one, for example. Yeah. Uh, in the UK, Highlander was distributed by canon but it was not a canon film. By yes, then. it gets confusing sometimes because then you have movies that came out after canon pictures and you might see Golan or Globus's name on it right. and you associate it with canon. But at that point, it, it really they weren't really canon pictures anymore. What's interesting about this movie, though, is I have the poster for this. And it's almost an oversized poster. I wonder if it was British, like their theatrical posters look different than ours. But yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, absolutely. Yeah. But I think this was a British production that they did fund and released, uh, you know, all, all over the place. But uh, yeah, Men of Iron, Blades of Steel. I oh, enjoy Max it. Von Saito. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you, David. Yeah, yeah. And I have the. I'm very happy. I have the Blu-ray of this. It finally got released on Blu-ray a couple years back, and this thing was notorious for getting released on DVD and pan and scan. And I was like, the whole point of me getting DVD is that I don't have to worry about these horribly cropped movies anymore. And then they released this in pan and scan. Yeah. So finally, the Blu-ray came out, and I finally owned it in widescreen. I was very happy. So I got to go. tell you, Boomer, I'm at the mm -hmm. point where um, I, I I need to start uh, start building my blu-ray collection because sure. um you know i i generally uh a favor dvd but i'm at the point where sometimes dvds either uh haven't been released or yeah. are out, out of print, print yeah and i'm better off just getting the damn blu-ray that's what i was able to do with those early warner nor movies is that they re-released them on blu-ray yeah. so i picked them up there yeah, but yeah. um exterminator 2 you know what i think i i think Mario Van Peebles was in this. I've not seen this. Have you? It's a, okay. it's a vigilante movie. No, I movie. have not. I, I I've seen the first huge, Exterminator. I am. A oh, huge, is that spelled wrong? <laughs> maybe. I am a huge Mario Van Peebles fan, but I have not seen this film. And is this another one of those ones oh. where Exterminator was? He uh, came some back. Some other for... company, and they and yes. Cannon picked. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm wondering if Cannon picks it up and spelled it differently and got hired the same actor. Uh, Age of Boy, British quads are 30 by 40. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Ours are ours are different. It's uh, not 30. It's 28 by 40, I think, over here. That's interesting. Okay, that's why that was why it was weird, weirdly sized. Okay. Yeah, I think I have the British post for Sword of the Valley. I actually got this in a four-pack from Shout Factory. I don't know if this got Doesn't messed up in the flood or yeah. not. I have the Exterminator, the regular Exterminator on Blu-ray, though, which was, I think, a Vietnam vet comes back, and it's like another Death Wish-style movie where he becomes a vigilante and starts getting rid of the criminals, you know? I, I gotta it, say, they, they I, did the I, whole. I guess he's using Vietnam weapons like the flamethrower, though. That was his. I thing. have to admit, I am completely lost. I didn't even know about this series. Okay, well, we'll move on then. Oh, that's fair. Uh, okay, this might be a good. Go. <laughs> yeah, Ninja Three: The Domination. I have seen this. Film. Oh boy, I I saw it when it came out in the '80s. I do have the Blu-ray. I need to rewatch it. Maybe after this last one, he's the ultimate killer. She's the perfect weapon. Now, I'm sorry, that's enough for me. <laughs> You got the, uh, you got the, you got the bay from from breaking in a ninja outfit with the sword. I'm 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 sold. I'm sold. <laughs> okay, this is just, oh man. So I think the plot of this movie is this ninja gets killed by police and his soul leaves and inhabits the 
body of this aerobics the young lady aerobics aerobics instructor in this movie right i would i would and it's like the exorcist film. meets revenge of the ninja <laughs> meets flash yeah, dance is, I mean, this that's is, how it was no you're absolutely right it's it's revenge of the ninja it's the exorcist the it's flash dance flash <laughs> dance. yeah exactly that's and this is going to be a recurring theme with these canon films these Oh, this was good, and this was good, and this was good. Let's put these fuckers together, right? Look at those eyes. So she's possessed, and I. It's funny they were they were interviewing the actress, and in the documentary she goes, "Did my head spin in a scene? Oh no, my whole body was spinning around." And I guess she, there's a scene where she's flipping there's around. A scene where she's in a a uh, she she's tied up, and then the whole thing. I don't know around. if they're trying to exercise her in one scene or get the evil ninja spirit out of her. I don't know what is going on earth is going on with canon films at this point. But yeah, this, ninjas were huge in the '80s. I have to tell you, kids. Uh, uh, other martial hey, arts Lucinda movies are probably just hated ninjas. Just, okay, let, let, let's face it. Lucinda Dickey, friggin' hot, right? Yes, you know. nice looking lady. And uh, uh, especially what was she in? That in? Ninja she was game. in Breaking, Breaking Two, Grease Two, and this ninja film. That's yeah. that's about her whole CV. She's yeah. coming to assassinate me. I might be inclined to let her. That's that's the problem. <laughs> I'm just it's... right, right, right. Oh right. man, I'm sorry. What was I going to say though? Yeah, not into ninja movies. Yeah, you, you have to understand, Mr. Landell's groovy movies that I grew up with video games in the '80s. And if you grew up with video games in the '80s, all consoles had their ninja series. You had Ninja Gaiden on the NES on uh, Sega. You had the Shinobi I spent series. Way too much fucking time playing Ninja Gaiden in college. Oh, the arcade uh, version. Yes, there were times I was in, <laughs> I was in the commons area of the university playing Ninja Gaiden when I was supposed to be in in class. Just saying. You know, there was even a Ninja series for the uh, Commodore sixty four. Really? Yeah, there were like three of them. They, there's like they, it was like its own Ninja series. I missed that. Uh, played I was differently a big than Commodore like Ninja Gaiden. Guy, but I missed that. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was only. In, I don't know. I don't think it could be in England because you couldn't use the word ninja in England. Um, but uh, yeah, this was just uh, yeah ninjas. It's fine if you don't like ninjas, but um, that was Canon's thing. Funny enough, they don't do a ton with kung fu unless maybe we count Chuck Norris. Uh, I gotta be honest with you, kung fu movies. Yeah. Maybe we need to do a whole stream related to ninjas. I'm gonna reach out to Greg from might Fanzine. be an idea. Let's do ninjas to, to Michael from, from <laughs> Retro Blasting. And uh, ask them if they want in on this. This sure could thing. be a, a whole thing. Yeah. Chuck Norris. And of Chuck fucking Norris. The meme of Chuck Norris starts here. <laughs> yes, missing in action. So I assume this is a similar plot to Rambo, where there are uh, POWs still stuck over in Vietnam that the U.S. got, and he's going back to bring our boys home. Is that plot of this movie i've not seen it but i saw this one okay now most of these canon films we've been talking about i saw on cable uh but this one you better fucking believe i saw in the theater Mm -hmm. my mom took me she was uh my mom was big on the whole um pow mia thing right uh she had con she had a boyfriend and a, a bunch of uh, contemporaries that went to Vietnam that were either prisoners of war or supporters of people that were prisoners of war. Um, so this was a very personal kind of thing for me uh, growing up. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Chuck Norris, Missing in Action. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Chuck Norris missing in action. I've not seen this movie. Oh, so, you okay. haven't seen it. I oh, need to okay, watch I'm these. Sorry. I totally thought this was like, yeah, I've seen uh, every. I, I I need to I need to give it a shot. Maybe this you, summer you I will. My my, you my this is yeah. My mom would probably be you know. I'll, I'll, this I'll, I'll and the Rambo movies. films uh, were all. There was a my first car was a '79 T Bird, and. The bumper sticker I had was POWMIA, and it was because of these movies. Uh, yeah. Missing in Action, Chuck Norris, and the Rambo films. Yeah, but it, that, that's a cool poster, and uh, was this a good action movie? 
I liked it. <laughs> I'm just saying. But uh, this movie is on Tubi. Thank you, Jesse. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Maybe I'll watch it tomorrow. You never know. I've not seen it. Um, uh, now we're talking Chuck Norris was the man. It's closer to Uncommon Valor for the, than First Blood. Okay. Funny that uh, M60 Machine Gun was more loved by movies than the troops. But look at it on that poster there. Come on. You're a kid. You yeah. see that? I want one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's... Oh man, um, this was yeah. this was a time when Big Boom was uh, oh. the seller, as opposed to the modern era where oh no, guns are bad. Oh oh no. no, no. Did you know that Menachem go? I think they had signed someone over at they they signed Chuck Norris five. Why did you do that? And, and then of course, then the movie came out was a huge hit and says, "Hey Chuck, how you doing?" Like it was one of these things. Were so. One thing I got to say about Canon was they took Chuck Norris and gave him the opportunity <laughs> to do a bunch of action films that took him from, let's face it, an action uh, uh, actor who was just the physical guy to a real substantial actor. There would be no... Um, Walker, Texas Ranger, if it hadn't been for the time he spent with Cannon. Yeah. Just saying. Now we're almost hitting the midnight mark. Do you want to break here and go to Rumble, or what do you want to do? Yes. Yes, I do. Netter, okay. I am too fucked up to uh, drop the link to my <laughs> Rumble channel. So would you be willing to drop the link to my Rumble channel? And yeah, we I have to will. go there first because I wasn't there. I know I'm not. E well, no, actually, I am. You have to be on your own. Let me you? see if I can do I this. I can do it. I mean, I'm there now. I am. I am. I am so wasted. So stop adding vodka to your drink, then, dumbass. It's not just vodka. I'm. I'm. I've been keeping my drink um, going because I am enjoying <laughs> this stream. Yes. And alcohol is a mood enhancer. Okay, I'm folks, the link, but I, you I, have to pin it because I don't have pinning. I guys. will. Um, folks, thank, thank you, Deep Penzac. Be sure to join us on Rumble, though, if you can. That'd be great if all you could come over here. Absolutely. I would, I would say, over there. regarding alcohol, pin it. if you are drinking, please, please, if you, are, if you are sad, don't drink. If you are enjoying yourself, go ahead and drink. Because alcohol is a mood enhancer. Uh, and if you are is, sad, have hot chocolate because chocolate has endorphins and makes you feel happy. And and endorphins make you happy. Uh, oh oh, I it's actually one, have two, to go three, to four, five, six, seven, eighth from the bottom of the comments. <sighs> I actually have to go to Rumble. I excuse me to uh, you're just, YouTube. You're just reminding me that I uh, ate all my Easter candy <laughs> with all the chocolate. Oh, no, I don't want some more chocolate. We ate all. I, of I ate my I Reese's I bunny we, today. You know, we need to go shopping this weekend. You got to remind me, Netta. Yeah, I got to type up the list for our shopping stuff because we got. Like Chuck that. Norris uh, once punched outer space, and that's how we had black holes. <laughs> right, right. Uh, real quick, let me let me back up. I'm still trying to figure out about that. Uh, I forgot the guest you had on that. Where Lou Ferrigno got into it with David Carradine. <laughs> oh, that was uh, that was CK. Yeah, I uh, so Chris. wanted to see that Give fight. <laughs> I got, I got it. Oh, uh, are you sure? Pin message. There we go. Okay, so I've just pinned to the top. Uh, Netter's Netter. Oh. Can you confirm for me, Netter, <laughs> <laughs> that I actually did what I yes. said I'm doing? Troy's Rumble is now pinned to the top of the stream. Yes, exactly. And I'm going to be ending the YouTube. Uh, where is my stream? Which yes. ends rather abruptly. So it's, it's, it's kind of like you Yes, I'm phone. going to end very abruptly on YouTube. And uh, we're going to continue on Rumble. So if you're here and you're uh, enjoying uh, the conversation and you want to see the rest of it, please come on over to Rumble. Click on Netter's link. Um and uh, if you enjoy what I do, please subscribe to me on Rumble. Because if anything happens to my YouTube channel, which is statistically likely, uh, <laughs> I will be on Rumble. And that's where you will find me 
Yeah. Every Friday and Monday and who knows, I may be starting a, another uh, stream throughout the week. So uh, Yeah, we got Wednesdays up for the most part. <laughs> well, right now I've got a and a, a d game on Wednesdays, but who knows? Who knows what I might start All doing. right, Nate knows is in Rumble. So, yeah, everybody, try see, if you can, please join us over in Rumble. The best is so yet guys, to come. guys, thank <laughs> okay. you so much for hanging out with us uh, here on YouTube. Join us on Rumble and... Uh, uh, yeah, when he, when he ends the stream, it's almost like he just hung up the phone. Yeah, I'm literally going to press a button and the stream will end on YouTube. So please come on over to Rumble and uh, unless I'm mistaken, if you're in Rum if you're in YouTube, you're still there and seeing the pinned comment. So you should click on it. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm going to keep the uh, YouTube open on my side just so I can see what happens when you. Decide right. to suddenly go down. Yep. So thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, hope to see you on Rumble in about 30 seconds. Take care, and I'll Bye -bye. catch you later.